I'm from Nelson. I've got a family, I'm self-employed. I'm Greg Cago and I'm a hunter. I've been dubbed the hunter philosopher uh, because I'm prepared to ask the questions. Uh, I don't think people put the energy into thinking about their ethics in hunting and the, the why so much. I grew up pretty much in the, in the back country in New Zealand. Hunting was just out the back door and so it was just the done thing in those days and as a little boy I just grew up with dad coming home with dead things. <laughs> but I think I was just influenced by that's what they did. Now I'm growing up and that's what I do. I'm having a good look here this morning but um, we might be a bit late or uh, this wind might be uh, just keeping the animals back in the bush so we might go and look in the bush in a bit and uh, see what we can find in there. There's nobody else here, it's, it's really quiet and that, that's a neat part about hunting, the physicality of it but also sometimes even the spirituality of it, you can sit here and just sort of think about life. That's where he finds his um his spiritual side. When we first got married we had a very small apartment and uh, there was absolutely no room for the the stag with heaps of antlers you know so the only place was directly <laughs> above our bed. <laughs> so there I was lying there yeah, that's a pretty... with this, <laughs> these antlers. It never fell thinking, down. Yeah, well I was worried because <laughs> I knew who was going to get slaughtered in the process. <laughs> I enjoy being out in a natural uh, environment. I enjoy the cold in the morning. I enjoy the warmth of this fire. I enjoy everything slowed down a little bit more to the rhythms of nature. Setting up camp, getting firewood, cooking, cleaning dishes. I wrote about that once, uh, about the kind of things that I enjoy that aren't specifically about hunting and shooting and carrying meat out, it's just all the little things like just watching uh, darkness creep over the land or like being there at first light in a kind of like a surreal morning. Those favourite things uh, kind of put the icing on it for me. I'm not talking about being at one with nature so much but just at the same rhythm as nature. The animals were out here in the dark probably last night and we tried to catch them at first light so it's the same kind of rhythm and uh, we'll rest up during the middle of the day and we'll hunt again tonight. So, so the plan here, it's, it's coming up five o'clock, so we're gonna head along here and uh, look off down the side on the other side. We'll have a bit of wind in our face, so that's a good sign. And uh, hopefully catch some deer poking out of the bush on the evening. Uh, we've got Mark with us as well. There's a whole lot of um, intangible things that come with being out here that at the end of the day they add to the experience. Walk a bit further up, check out the skyline. The thing that does get me out of bed I think is just to get out and move with nature. Having it wrap around me and me be part of it and it part of me and I don't know if that sounds cheesy or not, but it's living and moving and being all in the same rhythm. Rhythm seems to be the right word. Just wait here a second. Oh, I've checked that slope right along the bush edge there. It is as much for me about being away in the hills and wild places as it is for seeing animals or for shooting animals. When I was young, you know, it was kind of like everything I saw that moved, I shot. It must be really sad. Mm. You shoot an animal and you go up to it and it's like, oh, hmm, poor thing. I was very happy just a few minutes <laughs> just ago. Just a few minutes ago. And now I've ruined its life. I still need those opportunities to get out and be away in the hills in, in order that when I am at home, I'm the kind of man that they've come to know. So without hunting, I think I'd be a lesser Greg Kago. I just sort of know that if he doesn't go and do it, then he's a lot more difficult to live with. So. Oh, he's a pain. <laughs>
<laughs> Sometimes I come home and a garage door um, goes up and um, there's a carcass hanging there, <laughs> yeah. waiting to greet me and I go, all right. <laughs> so, Tomorrow we'll just go with that similar plan uh, if I head up, kind of like what we were doing tonight, walking up the ridge, stopping periodically, check over on that face. And if we see something, what's that? Hang on. And the best thing is just to cut down through the scrub and close the distance. While I enjoy all of those aspects of being out and in the outdoors, I am also a hunter and I'm there to, there to shoot meat. And, uh, and, and I don't apologise for that, I, I am a hunter. With hunting there's definitely a, a strong link between the hunter and the meat on their plate. You know, it's kind of the, there's a really strong connection because you were there at its death. It was it was quite good. We just managed to get get that hunt done and um, get the meat chopped up before uh, the weather packed in. I guess every hunter too has a time when they have a, like a defining moment in their hunt. I had that years ago when I was on the tops in the Lewis Pass. I'd shot this nanny chamois for her horns, and here was the the young chamois staying by its mother kind of like what's wrong because uh, it was it was so young just a heart-wrenching moment I realized what what have I done you know what a what a what an absolutely stupid thing to do I guess the thing I learned that day on the hill and I've carried forward in my years since and and in my under underarching sort of philosophy is that one can gain satisfaction also from choosing not to kill yeah, you're not defined as a hunter by the horns on the wall, you're defined by your actions in the field. I wanted to sort of bring all those elements together and get people to think about well, what is it especially that, that drives people to go hunting? Is it that it's hardwired into us since time immemorial, the deep time? All, all of those questions I wanted, to, I wanted to ask and try and provide answers for and I think that's why I got dubbed the hunter philosopher. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> funny that.